John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And we spent the past two weeks looking, excuse me, looking at uh, some statements that Jesus made, which were proofs of his deed, proof that he was God. In, in other words, we looked at these statements that Jesus made, in which we, the only option we were left with is either to conclude that Jesus is God or that Jesus is a liar. But there wasn't any middle ground. Uh, Jesus said in, in John chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. He said basically, he and his father, speaking of God, of course, in that statement, that he and his father were equal in service. In verse 19, he said that he and God were the same in their will. In verse number 20, he said that he and God were the same in their knowledge or their intelligence. In verse 21, he said they were equal in power. In verses 22 to 24, Jesus said they were equal in honor, uh, going so far as to say that if we honor him, we honor the Father, and if we don't honor him, then we don't honor the Father. But again, we, we looked at that last week. That can only be true if they are the same. If, they, if Jesus is God, uh, you know, as we, we use the example uh, I was mentioning earlier in, in the United States today, it's Father's Day, and I called my father last night to wish him a happy Father's Day to speak with him. And, you know, my father and I look very similar because I am his son. And so, you know, I shared some characteristics with him. But when you honor, if someone were to honor my father, while I might be blessed by that and encouraged by that, I don't receive honor just because somebody honored my father. And the same goes for me. If someone were to honor me, and I use the example of receiving like a doctor's degree, you know, if, if I finished university and I got my uh, doctorate degree in, in some subject, while my father could be blessed by that or encouraged or have some pride that his son had accomplished that, my father didn't become a doctor if I became a doctor. The honor was mine and it isn't, you know, his. He's blessed by it. He can be encouraged by it. He can be proud that his son achieved it. But the honor was given to me, not to him. But Jesus said, if you honor me, you honor the Father. If you honor the Father, you honor me. And if you don't honor me, then you don't honor the Father. So he said, we're equal in those things. In verses 24 to 26, Jesus said, he, as, as God, was able to have power to give life. And we saw Jesus prove that, right? He raised several people from the dead during his earthly ministry. And so he showed not only that he made the statement, he showed he actually did have power over life. And he said, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. So Jesus said he had that power to give life. And lastly, last week we looked at from verses 27 to 30, Jesus saying that he had power or authority to judge, to condemn, and to give eternal life. God made Jesus Christ the judge. He gave all judgment into his hands. And again, the only way that could be is if Jesus is God. And with that in mind, now we'll continue uh, in John chapter 5, from verse 30 down through the end of the chapter, verse 47. So John chapter 5, from verse 30 to the end of the chapter, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. 
But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? And again, very strong words that Jesus speaks here. But let's go to the Lord in prayer again as we have his word open and the Lord to help us through the message today. Lord, we come to you again, Lord, and we thank you for your words, Lord, that we were just able to read. And we ask, Lord, that you would now speak to our hearts through your word. Give us understanding, Lord. Open our minds, Lord, open our ears that we could hear, Lord, that we would be able to receive these things that you have for us today. Lord, we ask, Father, that you would speak to each of us individually. Give us the wisdom to understand your word, Lord. Give us the the, uh, the knowledge that we need. Lord, we know that you have something for us today from your word. Lord, something to increase our faith, something to uh, encourage us in our walk with you, something to direct us in our Christian lives, Lord, we know, Father, that there are things you have prepared for us today. And we ask, Lord, now that you would remove all other distractions, Lord. Help us to focus solely on what your word says, Lord. Help me as I preach now, Lord. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, <clears throat> so, as I said, the past two weeks, we looked at these seven statements that Jesus made about his deity. And today kind of with the remainder of the chapter, I want to look at the four witnesses that Jesus mentions. Four witnesses that are witnesses of his deity. That is, they speak about, they testify, or in other words, confirm the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we can think of this even as we might think of in a, a legal process. If uh, someone is accused of something, and they are brought into a court of law, you know, oftentimes if there is a crime or something, they will call what? Witnesses. People that can testify to what took place, whether it be a crime, whether it be something with documentation, or they'll ask for a witness. Uh, even if it's not necessarily a crime, I was involved in a car accident many years ago uh, in uh, 2000. And uh, January of 2000, I was involved in this car accident. A friend of mine was driving. I was sitting in the rear on the passenger side, and uh, a vehicle went through uh, a red light and ran into the side of our car, and there was a big mess and, and of course, injuries and things that occurred from that. My friend who was driving was very, uh, very seriously injured in that accident. And so afterwards, uh, I was required to be a witness to the events, to make a statement for the police and for those that were investigating it, for the insurance companies, all of these things. I had to make a statement that is to witness, to testify what I remembered of the event, how it had occurred, if our light had been green, was it or was it not, uh, was the person driving the car I was in, had they been speeding, was the radio up very loud? You know, all of these different types of things. I was told to testify, to be a witness to the events. Why? Because in order to establish the truth of something, we can't just take the word of one person. One person could say whatever they want. It may be true. I'm not saying everybody's a liar, but in order for us to have confidence in something, 
there have to be other witnesses. And so Jesus, as he's speaking here, first he makes seven statements himself testifying of his deity. And now he's going to give us four witnesses of what he's claiming. And we see that in verse 30, right? Jesus said, I can of my, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Notice what Jesus says in verse 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Now, Jesus isn't saying, I'm a liar here. Jesus is talking about a sort of a legal situation. If there's only one person saying something, we can't establish it as a fact. It may be true. It may not be. It may be a fact. It may not be. You know, I, I could tell you that yesterday I was uh, walking in, uh, in kind of a park area and I saw uh, a bird that had white and black feathers. That may be true, that may be not. If you trust me, you'll, you'll believe that I saw a bird like that. But if we're talking about a legal court case, I'm not sure why there would be some issue about a bird, but for whatever reason, say there was. And it was important whether I had seen this bird or not. If I'm the only one to make that statement, we can't legally establish it as true. Someone else has to testify. Like if my wife who was there with me, if she were to say, yes, we did see that bird, and it was sitting you know, on this tree or whatever, and her story matched with my story, now we have a little bit more confidence that what's being said is true. And then if you have a third witness that says, oh yes, I also saw that bird there. Oh, now we're going to be a lot more confident. Okay, we have three people Three independent witnesses who said, that is true. We saw this bird. Jesus says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. In other words, Jesus is saying, if I'm the only one saying these things, if I'm the only one making this claim, then you're not obliged, you're not obligated to believe what I've said. But notice he continues, verse 32. There is another that beareth witness of me. So Jesus makes the statement that if he was the only one saying these things, we're not obligated to believe it. But now Jesus goes further and he says, now listen, I've said all these things, but let me tell you, there's another witness. That's what he says in verse 32. There is another witness, or I'm sorry, there is another that beareth witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. So who is this witness? Jesus explains it in verse 33. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. Now again, why did Jesus say, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true, there is another that beareth witness? Well, because under Jewish law, you had to have two or three witnesses in order to establish the truth. If we were to look at Deuteronomy chapter 17, if you want to turn there, you can. Deuteronomy chapter 17, in verse number 6, here we have the Jewish law, the law that God gave to his people. In Deuteronomy 17, verse 6, at the mouth of two witnesses, or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. Now think about that. Why, why did God put that in the law? God was saying, in order to establish the truth of the matter. When we talk about what we call capital punishment, someone being put to death for a crime, if there is only one person that is witnessing that this person committed that crime, then you cannot put them to death. They may be guilty, but you cannot put them to death because there is not enough, uh, there aren't enough witnesses. But if there's two or three witnesses, then the truth has been established. In Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse number 15. One witness shall not rise against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. 
in any sin that he sinned. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. Again, what is God saying? In order for us to say, ah, this absolutely is the truth, we have to have more than one witness. And so Jesus, again, speaking to Jewish people, what does he say? If I bear witness in myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and he goes on to tell us who that witness is. He says that John the Baptist is that witness. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. This is back in John 5, verse 33. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that he might be saved. He, speaking of John the Baptist, was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So Jesus says, there's another witness who testifies of me. John the Baptist testifies of who I am. He witnessed of me. He testified of me. And Jesus reminds them, you believed John. You believed that John was sent from God. You believed that he was a prophet or he was a preacher, someone that God had sent. You believed that he was that voice crying in the wilderness the Bible talked about. Jesus says, you, you believed him. He was a burning and shining light. You were willing to rejoice in that light. You were willing to listen to him. So if you're willing to listen to him and you believed him, then listen to the witness he gave. He testified that I am the Christ. I am the Messiah. John is a witness to all of these things that I've just said. John is witnessing of them. John is speaking of them. John said those things. Now Jesus continues. Notice verse 36. But I have a greater witness than that of John. So remember, Jesus said, there's another that beareth witness of me. Then he tells us about John the Baptist. But now in verse 36, Jesus says, so the first new witness is John the Baptist. There is another. I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So Jesus says, John was a witness. Here's the second witness. The works that I do. That is the miracles that Jesus performed. Jesus, in other words, is saying here, the second witness that I have come from God, that I am everything that I've said that I am, that I am that Messiah, I am the promised one, I am the one who is equal with God. The witness that I am are the miracles. In John chapter 3, I have several places here in the book of John to look at. John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Pay attention to the words of Nicodemus, Rabbi. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. And then he gives the reason. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. In other words, Nicodemus says, the works, the miracles, the things that you've done, Jesus, they witness that you have come from God. Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews, says, Jesus, the things that you're doing, the miracles you perform." They witness and testify that you are the Messiah. In John chapter 9. John chapter 9. I'm skipping ahead in the life of Christ. In verse number 30. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing? This is a man who was born blind. Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, speaking of Jesus, and yet he hath opened my eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. What is this blind man? Well, he's no longer blind, formerly blind man. What is he saying? How could this man not be from God? He performed a miracle. We know that God isn't performing miracles and listening to those, you know, God is not working through.
through the hands of someone who is a sinner that rejects God, that rebels against God. Uh, remember, the Pharisees had accused Jesus of working through the devil's power. And this man says, this is a marvelous thing. If a man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, he heareth, since the world began, pay attention, since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. What is that man's testimony? The miracles that Jesus performed are a witness of what of who Jesus is. They're a witness to his power. John chapter 10, verse 25, Jesus speaking. Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So there again, Jesus speaking with a different group of people says, you're not listening, you're not believing the words that I've given you. But what does he tell them? Look, don't believe me because of what I've said. Believe me because of the things that I've done. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So again, Jesus talking about that witness of the things he does. John 10, 37, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Again, Jesus saying, look, as he said in John 5, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me, and of course there he's talking about John, but then he goes on and he says, and the works I do bear witness of me. And here in John chapter 10, verse 37, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not, but if I do, though you believe not me, that is, if you, even though you don't believe my words, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. And John 14, multiple times Jesus made this statement about his works. I didn't even write down all of them. There's others. John 14, verse number 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very work's sake. So again, what, what is Jesus saying there? He's saying, you should believe me. He's talking with his disciples. You should believe me because of the things that I've said. Absolutely, you should believe me because of the words I've said. But notice at the end of verse 11, he says, or else. That is, okay, if you don't want to believe the words that I'm saying, if, you, if that's not enough to convince you, then believe me for the very work's sake. That is, if what I've said isn't sufficient for you to believe, that's okay. Believe me because of the miracles then that I've done. Again, he's speaking with his disciples. They, at this point in time, have seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. Seen him take up a man who was born blind and heal him. In John chapter 5, where we're at, at the beginning of that chapter, we have a man there who for nearly 40 years... Has been, had been lame and unable to move and, and lying at this pool, just looking, hoping that somehow he would receive a healing. He had no help anywhere else. Uh, we've seen Jesus heal, or they have seen Jesus turn the water into wine at that feast in John chapter 2. They've seen Jesus calm storms. They've seen Jesus walk on water. And so Jesus says, if my words aren't enough, then believe me because of the miracles you've seen. Believe me for the works. So Jesus, in John chapter 5, talks about these different witnesses. The first one, John the Baptist. The second one, his miracles. Let's go back to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. The next witness, John chapter 5, verse number 37. So verse 36, he says, I have a greater witness, and that's the works that I've done. 37, and the Father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. So here, 
Jesus tells us about a third witness. His father witnesses of him. And maybe we might ask, well, okay, what, when, did, when did God the Father witness of Jesus Christ? Because Jesus says, he witnessed of me, right? My Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. Well, if we go back <coughs> to Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, and I, I would say that there, there really is no greater witness than God witnessing of you. But in John, uh, Matthew chapter 3, no greater witness than that. Matthew chapter 3, verse number 16. This is Jesus' baptism. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So what is that voice from? That's the voice of God. God witnessed that Jesus Christ was the Son. So Jesus tells us, look, if I was, if, if I by myself, if I was the only one speaking these things, then it would, you could reject it. You could reject what I'm saying because you don't know. Maybe I am just a crazy person. If, if, if it was just me witnessing, but Jesus says, look, there are other witnesses. John the Baptist witnessed of me, and you received his witness. You believed him. You believed the things that John the Baptist preached. Jesus says, look, he testified of me. He witnessed that I am the Messiah. I am the Son of God. Then Jesus says, and my works, the miracles that I've done. Even as we looked at the, the story of the blind, the man born blind in John chapter 9, and that guy said, look, from the, has anybody ever heard of someone who has healed a man that was born blind? How is it that you can't believe that this man came from God? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God, because no man can do the works that thou doest, except to be sent from God. Jesus said, my works testify that I have come from God. And here, remember Jesus said, God has borne witness. And here we see in Matthew chapter 3, at Jesus' baptism, heaven opens up, the dove descends, and the voice of God cries out, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we, we see again that there is no greater witness than that. God himself testified of Jesus Christ. But again, there's another witness. Let's go back to John chapter 5. As I told you, Jesus gives us four different witnesses, or mentions four different witnesses. And then bear in mind that the scriptures say, if there's two or three witnesses, something is established. What does Jesus tell us? Here's four witnesses of who I am. So right after saying, making seven different statements of how he is God, Jesus then gives us four witnesses to the fact that he is God. That is, four others who testify of the very same things that Jesus himself spoke. That last witness we find in verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. In other words, Jesus says, remember, he said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me, John the Baptist. My works, the miracles that I've done, they bear witness of me. They show my power. They show that God is with me. Number three, he says, God the Father has testified that I am the Messiah. But now lastly, and again Jesus speaking to a group of people, Jewish people, who knew the Old Testament, who had the Old Testament, who had God's word. They were the keepers of God's word. What does Jesus say to them? Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know ye. I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, 
and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. He continues, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. In, in other words, it just if you think about this statement as Jesus is speaking here, he's speaking to a group of people that are rejecting. They, they actually, they want to kill him because of the things that he did and that he said at the beginning of the chapter. And so, in a sense, Jesus is rebuking them as he says all these things. And here he says, now, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father, right? Jesus has said, I am God. He's made it clear that he's God. He's stated that he's God. He's given witness to the fact that he's God. But you know what he says? He says Look, I'm not the one that's going to accuse you to God. I'm not the one that's going to stand before God and say, ah, they rejected my words. Jesus said, no, no, there's someone else that will accuse you. You know who's going to accuse you? That is the one who is going to state your guilt. The one that's going to accuse you is Moses. He says, look, you trust in Moses. If you believed in him, you would have believed in me, for he wrote of me. If ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? In other words, Jesus is saying, look, if you're not going to believe what the scriptures have said about me, you're never going to believe what I have to say. And that's why Jesus says, look, I'm not the one that's going to accuse you. You're guilty because you've refused to accept what Moses wrote. You, And as he accuses them of that, he says, look, even Moses, in whom he trusts. He says, oh, you, you believe in Moses, you trust in Moses. Well, he wrote about me. Moses wrote about me. David wrote about me. Isaiah wrote about me. Jeremiah wrote about me. All the prophets wrote about me. And you say you trust in them, you believe in them. Those are the ones that are going to accuse you. Well, you, you, you can think about it this way. If you're, you have a job or something and you're given a list of things for that job, you know, these are the things you have to do. That's your requirements. That's the, the job description. You need to do A, B, C. You know, maybe it's a job cleaning a, an office building or something. Okay, you have to clean the bathroom, you know, uh, sweep the floor, empty the garbage. You know, here's the list of things. And you say, well, I don't like my boss, and so I'm not going to do those things. I'll, uh, I'll sweep the floor, but I won't empty the garbage. Okay. Then the next day, when you're in trouble for not doing your job, you know, it doesn't matter whether you like the boss or not. You'll be judged by what was on the list of the things you're required to do. If you didn't listen to that list, it doesn't matter it, it, whether you listen to the guy who gave you the list. The list already told you what to do. That's what judges you. That's what accuses you. And Jesus is saying, look, if you aren't going to accept the word of those, you know, those that wrote about me, even though you say you trust in them, you believe them, if you're not going to accept their words, you're not going to accept my words. But Jesus here again, he tells us, the scriptures testify of him. And, and Jesus here is condemning a group of Pharisees, a group of people that, that are supposed to be the masters of the law, the ones who are supposed to know and, and know the Bible so well that they teach it to others. You know, there, there's, a, there's a difference in knowledge if you know something and then know it well enough to teach it. You, you may know something, but not know it well enough to teach it. Uh, there, there's a, a famous physicist and uh, <clears throat> his name was Feynman. And one of the things that made Feynman famous was not just that he understood a lot of things about physics, but he was famous for being able to explain very complicated things from physics in a way that the everyday person could un understand it, could comprehend it. He was a master of physics. Someone who is a master of a subject is able to take the complicated and to explain. And these Pharisees, they were supposed to be masters of the law, to know it at such a high level 
that they could now take it and make application and explain it to us in our everyday life. But you know that what this shows us is that it's absolutely and completely possible for someone to know information about the Bible and not have a relationship with the God of the Bible. They can know what the scriptures say. It's kind of a, a knowledge, like a like a student or something. They have they have the knowledge. We were talking about exams earlier to take an exam. But to not know, to not have a personal relationship, to, to not believe or accept what it says. And here Jesus says, as he ends that, if you believe not his writings, talking about Moses, how shall you believe my words? And, and there we see the absolute truth of that. They had the word of God, they had that witness, but they refused to accept it. And so again, Jesus, having in mind that it's two or three witnesses to establish something is true, after Jesus makes these statements about being God, he says, look, you don't have to accept what I've said. You don't have to accept my words. I, there are four witnesses that testify the truth of what I said. John the Baptist, my works, the miracles that I've God himself and the scriptures, all four of these testify to the truth of who I am. And yet, the Pharisees continue to reject Jesus, and until today, there are many who continue to reject Jesus. They won't accept him. They won't accept him based on his words. They won't accept him based on the words of others. They won't accept him based on the miracles he did. They won't accept him based on what the scriptures say. They reject him. They have knowledge. But they refuse to receive him. Refuse to accept him. Jesus Christ is absolutely 100% God. The Messiah. And there is no other hope for a lost man. But to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the word today. Lord, for the privilege we've had to open it. To read from it. Lord, I ask Father that you speak to our hearts, Lord, through the week, Lord, help us remember these things. Lord, I thank you for the confidence we can have in Jesus Christ, Lord, that he is God, Lord, that it's not just something he said, Lord, but there's uh, witnesses of that fact, witnesses of that truth, Lord, in your word. We ask, Lord, now that you would go with us this week. In Christ's name, amen. amen.